Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Greg Hogg and welcome to a three-part series on collecting web data. Now in this series, we'll talk about everything from proxy networks, also called proxies, to web scrapers, to even some real use cases. We're gonna go over all these different terms, so if you haven't even heard of a proxy, don't worry, that's what this video is all about. Each video in the series is only about seven or eight minutes long, so it shouldn't take up too much of your time, but it's gonna be really, really valuable to learn these things well. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk all about what proxy networks are, as well as how the internet works, because it's very closely related. To gain access to the internet, we generally pay our internet service provider, or ISP. Your ISP provides you with a public IP address, which is something like 217.127.44.33, some bunch of numbers with dots in the middle, which is kind of like a postal code or zip code. It's sort of like a mailing address, although it's not quite as specific as that. If you were to type into your web browser, www.google.com, that goes to Google's public IP address. Communication over the internet generally works as an exchange. Say that we wanted to know from Google who is the best boxer of all time. Well, from our IP address, which I'll just call IP address A, we send over a request to Google, IP address B. Now that we've sent that request and they've seen what the question is, they're gonna do some processing on their side and then get the answer. Once they have the answer, they'll then return that information back to IP address A so that we have our answer. What's interesting here is that means our IP address, as well as Google's, is literally public. Like we have to tell Google, hey, this is the return address to send your answer back to. Please send it back here, which is where I'm located. Now that might strike a bit of a security concern because literally we are telling Google where we are located. Even without all of those location services and GPS and all of that stuff, by literally just sending a query to Google, they know pretty much where we are. Now it's true that an IP address is roughly like a mailing address, but luckily it's not that specific. If you had my postal code and unit number right now, I'd be a little bit concerned. But with my IP address, you don't have that. Basically, you would know that I'm living in Toronto, Canada, which is a very big space. I'm not really that concerned about you knowing that. Now, while we're getting pretty used to Google knowing where we are, it's a pretty different story when you're just going around the web, clicking random links, maybe you've never seen these sites before, and yet they still have that same information. They know that I'd be in Toronto, Canada, and that's pretty weird. There is many, many issues with this public IP thing. One of the most notable being websites can control the information that they give you based off of the location that they know you are in. This video series is about how to collect web data from these websites using proxies. Now collecting web data is basically what's called web scraping, scraping the web. Web scraping without a proxy can be impossible and infuriating to get the information that we want. We want the information that's public that we deserve. Two, when continually requesting information from a site, they might see that we have the same IP address every time, so they'll either throttle, which means slow us down, or literally block us from scraping the internet. We don't want that, we deserve the information. Three, if websites have reason to believe we're using an automated web scraper, these websites are going to maybe do the captcha thing to make sure that we're a human and our scraper would get blocked, or again, they'll throttle or block our access to the site, which is really annoying and not fair. And four, it could be faster to scrape a really big website if you use multiple IP addresses, basically in parallel, all scraping the site at the same time. Versus you just from your computer sending many requests, it'll be a lot faster if we do it from like a data center. Using a proxy could fix all of these issues because they pretty much all arise just because of this annoying static IP we're accessing from the same public IP that we have assigned to us from our ISP, and that's not what we want to do when we're web scraping. So we should use a proxy. Okay, so clearly we want to use proxies when web scraping, but I haven't told you how to do that. Well, we're gonna be talking more about web scrapers in the next video, but for now, I'll tell you that I use Bright Data's proxies, and they are the proud sponsor of this whole series. Bright Data provides a state-of-the-art suite of proxies and tools to unlock our web scraping and automatically get the information that we deserve to get. It turns out there's actually multiple different types of proxies, so depending on your type of situation, you may want to use one of the following types. 
sourced from local desktop and mobile devices of real users, a residential network proxy is going to allow you to really unblock those websites that you're trying to scrape data from. There's super proxies, which have an excellent traffic ratio and can handle these fluctuations due to their great size and spread of location. As I mentioned earlier, there's a data center proxy, there's ISP proxies, which actually do allow you to get the same IP address, which can be useful in some scenarios. And with mobile proxies, you can see the web as any real mobile user would. Okay, this video was all about proxies themselves. If it felt like a lot of information, honestly, don't worry about it. It's mainly the fact that a middleman here, this proxy is a middleman between us and the server that we're communicating to. It just creates a chain of requests rather than a direct chain from me to the server. It goes me to the proxy to the server, to the server, back to the proxy, back to me. And that can help for a myriad of reasons, mainly to do with security and changing our IP address so we don't get blocked. While we mentioned the concept of web scraping vaguely, in the next video, we're gonna talk a lot more about how to web scrape, what it is and why you would do it. Once that video comes out, that'll be linked at the top there and have a great day guys, see you later.